Stronger U.S. economic data has led some market watchers to believe that a Fed pivot away from jumbo size interest rates could be on the way. But is that actually the case? Joining us now to discuss is today's feature guest, Robert Pemberton, head of fixed income at TD Asset Management. Robert, great to have you here. This is the big question of the summer, really. You get one inflation print that comes in a little bit below expectations. Pivot, pivot, pivot. What's the reality here? Well, great to be here. And, you know, it is the teeter-totter that everybody's talking about right now, the seesaw battle between inflation and growth. And, you know, the way I would basically characterize it is one number does not make a trend. Uh, we saw yesterday uh, from the Canadian statistics, CPI coming in on a headline basis lower, but core inflation continuing to rise. And what the Fed, Bank of Canada, Bank of England, uh, the ECB are all focused on now is inflation and targeting that lower inflation growth. And my current read on it is that if you were going to call anything a pivot in the, the last Fed announcement, it would be a, a pivot from the uh, end of the beginning to the beginning of the end of Fed rate hikes. And that pivot is still uh, in the process and we're a long way from being done on the rate hike side. I was gonna say beginning of the end sounds like a bit of a long road. I think we've become accustomed to really uh, quick responses and sort of getting our, our needs met very quickly by central banks. And it's been a while, right? Always riding to the rescue. Uh, but this seems to be an era where they're saying, listen, we got an inflationary problem here and we're gonna do whatever it takes. And sort of that sort of reads to me as restoring some credibility that may have been lost earlier in the pandemic. Well, certainly with the responses we saw both from a monetary perspective and a fiscal perspective during the pan pandemic, uh, the economic growth we saw coming out of it definitely saw central banks behind the, t the, the times with respect to inflation and inflationary pressures. And I'm certain when economic historians uh, look back at this period, they will say that they, the central banks were slow to react. The reaction function since then has actually been very, very positive in terms of gaining back much of that credibility. And we've seen that uh, both from where we see terminal rates, so what the market's pricing for where central banks will get to, uh, as well as what we're starting to see from uh, an inflation perspective. My thought process on it right now is that we're likely to see inflation move lower relatively quickly to probably that four and a half to five percent range but from five and a half, or five rather, down to two, uh, could be a much longer slug than the market's currently pricing. Let's talk about the long game then, because obviously there had been some thought, not only from a pivot point of view, but even this fact that, okay, they're going to be done pretty soon, and then they're going to be cutting again because they're going to have to react to weakness in the economy. And some people say, not so quick here. I mean, the inflation job and bringing it down to target is going to be a rough one. It is going to be a long one. And you just can't turn on a dime again and get back into easy monetary policy. That, that it's not going to be all, we're not going to get all of our needs met in the next couple of days or weeks. Uh, correct. And I think maybe a good way to frame that is uh, people expecting the Fed put to come back into the market plates are likely to be disappointed uh, over the next two or three years. Uh, we certainly believe that uh, the market is mispricing, you know, the, the rate cuts in 23 and 24 uh, in order to get inflation back down. Certainly some of the cyclical components of inflation are going to uh, come back down and, and, and ease, but some of the secular uh, issues associated with it, particularly wages, uh, housing, uh, owner's equivalent rent, things along those lines, they are going to remain sticky and higher for longer, which it tends to mean that overall inflation will remain higher. And <clears throat> with that, uh, as I mentioned, the idea that the Fed will be cutting rates uh, in 2023 is, uh, in, in my opinion, a little misplaced at this stage. They, I think the market is trying to bet between which fit former Fed governor or uh, they're going to or Fed chairman rather they're going to have, whether it's going to be the Arthur Burns of the mid 1970s or whether it's going to be Paul Volcker of the 1980s. And Arthur Burns, from a historical perspective, was reluctant to raise rates meaningfully to quell inflation, whereas we know Paul Volcker had a mm -hmm. great deal of credibility when it comes to raising rates uh, and and dealing with a tough medicine up front in order to provide a better outcome for the economy longer term. With these sort of divergent views in the market right now, this push and pull and people trying to figure out exactly where they want to be, what does it mean for the fixed income space? I mean, how should we approach it as an investor? 
Well, uh, from our perspective, you know, some key things have happened. The, the idea that we've seen an aggressive uh, uh, hike early on uh, in this cycle, and we continue to believe that we'll see 50s or 75s going forward for the next couple. Uh, central bankers broadly in North America want to get to at least 3.5% uh, on an overnight basis, which clearly we're 100 basis points away from. Uh, so we're going, to, we're going to continue to see that. But from a fixed income perspective, what that means is we're likely to see more volatility, partly because we're going to see more volatility in both the inflation numbers, in economic growth, and in assets broadly speaking. And we're also going to see uh, greater volatility in the numbers as a result of the Fed dropping forward guidance. So today's numbers in retail sales, yesterday's numbers in CPI, uh, housing data, uh, employment data, all of that is going to drive uh, market outcomes, which means we're likely to see uh, a broader range, particularly at the front end of the yield curve, as investors are trying to price 50 or 75. To me, that's kind of picking at nits. It's going to be at least 50, and it might be 75, depending on what the data shows us, but volatility will be higher. Interesting thing, though, longer term uh, maturities in the bond market are likely to experience somewhat less volatility uh, simply because so much has already been priced in for central bank cuts and uh, a way to think about long-term yields is they are a series of short-term yields and uh, with the uh, idea that uh, break-evens in the RRB market or in the TIPS market continue to point to long-term control of inflation uh, we believe that the longer end of the yield curve is likely to behave better than, than the front end of the yield curve, which is why you're seeing the inversion as, uh, of the yield curve, where short-term yields to maturity are higher than longer-term yield to maturities. And that's really under the basis that central banks are going to have to act aggressively initially, but over the longer term, we're likely to see things moderate back towards more two and a half percent uh, overnight range but that's several years out for some people that inversion of the yield curve is uh, not a good sign for what's coming ahead in the economy uh, people always want to say this time it is different is it different this time or is this giving us a pretty dire warning sign I, I, I don't know if I'd use the word dire, but inversion in the yield curve generally means uh, that there will be some economic pain ahead. Uh, the two-year, ten-year curve is inverted. Uh, the one that I'm really more focused on is three months, ten years, and it still remains positive at the margin, uh, but it, it has not inverted yet. I expect it to invert before the end of the year, uh, which really points to an economic slowing in 2023, 2024. And as a reminder to, to our, our viewers, the central bank has a very blunt tool with monetary policy. And what they're looking to do is decrease demand in the economy overall. And if they're going to do that, there will be slowing. It's just, will it be a painful slowing or will it be more moderate and softer? And I think there are different definitions of how to think about that. Uh, there's going to be a requirement for some unemployment uh, increases in order to take some of the pressure off the labor markets. Uh, there's going to be a need for final demand to decrease uh, uh, across multiple services. So they're trying to engineer that. And uh, an analogy I used in a conversation uh, not too long ago about this would be uh, the central banks trying to land a C-130 Hercules cargo plane on a postage stamp. So uh, it'll be a tough one to achieve a very soft landing, uh, and it's certainly something that they're, they're looking at trying. We think that the probabilities of a recession are greater than 50% over the next 12 to, to 18 months.